Yeah, we stand. I've heard people say, I came to church just for the word. I didn't want to stand. I didn't want to worship. They stand too long, so they left the church. That's somebody that got their agenda and not God's agenda. It's a mindset. Brandon, turn around for a minute look at me. Let me say this. I'm trying to settle. You remember all night when we stayed up in the clubs and we stood up all day cocked? You know what I'm trying to say? But then we got a problem for standing for the Lord. You didn't complain about going back to the club when they waste stuff on your shoes. When they had shootouts and stuff like that, you come right back to the same club that you almost lost your life at the night before. You don't make no excuses, but why do you want to make excuses when you get to the house of the Lord and say they stand too long, they worship too long. Do it take all that? Yes, it does, because those who've been forgiven much, they love much. Has anybody been forgiven for anything in the church? Woo, Jesus. Just had to bring a little context. Because I know many people are spoiled in the American church. They don't want to be inconvenienced. They want everything to be 30 minutes, an hour. And if you go over an hour, then it's too long. But sometimes, my God, it takes an hour just to settle down in this presence of the Lord. <laughs> uh, let us never forget, OG, what we did for the devil. Let's do it harder for Christ. My God. Mm. Acts, the 20th chapter. Acts, the 20th chapter, starting at verse 16. And I'm moving. Thank you, Lord. I uh, thank God that I got to shut in yesterday and just read when God first saved Apostle Paul from Saul to Paul, the book of Acts, the ninth chapter, and then the missions and the journeys, my God, that he was on. I was telling Pastor Ron, my son of Connection Church, my God, how Paul and Barnabas, and then Paul and Silas and Timothy, anytime they went into a city, Pastor Chump, the people said, here come these troublemakers. Everywhere the great apostle went, he caused trouble because he was preaching the gospel. Signs, miracles, and wonders was happening in Amber. And they said, here come these troublemakers. And so they formed mobs. And they tried to start riots to try to run them up out of the city. I want to be known as a troublemaker to the kingdom of darkness. Here come that loud, crazy, unorthodox pastor that's a troublemaker. Every time he come and leave, it's something turned up, side down. Oh, my God. Yes, Lord. Acts chapter 20, verse 16. When you have it, go ahead and say amen. amen. Paul had decided to sell on past Ephesus and he didn't want to spend any more time as I told you last week my God in the province of Asia he was hurrying to get to Jerusalem jump down to verse 18 when they arrived he declared mm -hmm, you know that from the day I set foot in the province of Asia until now I have done the Lord's work humbly with many tears talking to the elders mm -hmm, I have endured trials that came to me from the plots of Jews I never shrank. Oh my God, back from telling you what you needed to her. Did y'all catch that? Quit telling people what they want to her and tell them what they need to her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I never shrank back from telling you what you needed to her, either publicly or in your homes. I have had one message, verse 21 says, for Jews and Greeks alike. The necessity of repenting. That means a change of mind, change of direction, change of thoughts. From sin and turning to God and of having faith in our Lord. And now I'm bound by the Spirit to go on to Jerusalem. I don't know what awaits me, Paul says himself, that the Holy Spirit tells me in a city after city that jail changed it to prison. Prison and suffering lie ahead. But my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work that is assigned to me by the Lord. 
the work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. Father, bless the people. Say what you need to say. Help me help the people. Save somebody's soul. Be an in 205 South Sheridan or even online that's looking. Reclaim every wayward son, every, every wayward daughter. Reclaim them back to the fold. Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated in the presence. As I stated, my God, I'm going to finish up this, my God, from last week, my God. The title, of course, y'all know is Bound by the Spirit. Uh, 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 my God, uh, I thank God mm, that being bound, my God, has great significance to my own personal life. When you've been bound over by God, huh, when you've been picked out, hmm, when you've been set apart by God, things tend to deal with you different. God deals with people different. He don't deal with everybody the same way. Oh, my God. Uh, come on, somebody. Yeah, with me so far. And Apostle Paul, after he called so much torment to the body of Christ, God began to save him in the book of Acts, the ninth chapter. And then God bound Paul over. My God, he said, Ananias, go lay hands on this man called Saul. He's praying, my God. Huh? And Ananias said, I don't want to go mess with that man. That man is a killer. He's a Hitler. He has come with permission to torment the church. And God told Ananias, I heard what you're saying, sir. But this man that you're talking about, that the whole region, the whole world at the time was fearful of, he said, go lay hands on this man. He's a chosen instrument. <laughs> in spite of him torturing, in spite of him coming to a synagogue like this and dragging you and I out, throwing us in prison, beating us and so forth, he did all that to destroy the Christian way. But God told him and I, he's a steal. Ah, uh, chosen instrument. Quit letting people write you off because of your past and what you've been through. Your past ain't nothing but a testimony to your future. And so I taught y'all last week, you can go on and subscribe to the YouTube account. If you're online looking, you can subscribe to Going Off of Christ YouTube. If you're here, I want to encourage you to subscribe to YouTube, my God, so that you can keep up with what's going on here at Going Off of Christ Church. And before I do, let me say this right quick. I just looked at my daughter. I'm finna segue. All the November birthdays, can you please stand if you have a birthday in November? Any no in November's birthdays. We have several, 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 several. You, my God, we want to say happy birthday. Mm. Happy birthday to all of you. Happy birthday to all of you. If the Lord delay is coming, if not, we see you in heaven. Mm -hmm. Paul felt compelled by the Holy Spirit, y'all. Paul felt compelled by the Holy Spirit to go on to Jerusalem. In spite of all the warnings that the Holy Spirit gave Paul, that prison and suffering and trials and tribulations await you, that didn't matter because Paul had one mission, and that was to preach the gospel and do that what God has called him to do. As I taught y'all last week, I'm moving quickly. As I taught y'all last week, anytime you're doing anything for yourself, you're going to quit. But if you're doing it for the cause of Christ or for someone else, it will sustain you. If you're doing what you're called to do, Mike, I'm doing what you want to do for just you. You're going to quit because you'll find some reason to justify and talk yourself out of doing what you should be doing. But when you understand that I am bound by the Spirit of God, I am committed to that what God has entrusted unto me. So therefore, when you don't feel like it, you'll get up. When you don't want to pray, you still will pray. When you don't want to read, you read. When you don't want to come to church, you still come to church because you understand God is dependent on you. Not only is God dependent on your people is dependent on you. Am I talking to the right crowd? Mm. So in these verses, my God, that I just read to you, my God, the great apostle teaches us what a solid believer does when he's bound in the spirit. Many of us, my God, if I told you or God told you that, my God, tomorrow, get ready to go lay down for about 10 flat. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me explain that. Uh, you're on your way to prison. I'm sorry, Brandon. I looked at you and thought about that dime you had to do. Come on, somebody. Uh -huh. uh, they don't. Paint the picture, man. If... The Spirit of God told you today, Stacy, that you're going to prison for 10 flat years tomorrow. If you go on to Jerusalem, will you go? Right now. Thank you for being out, because many of you will probably nod and say, yeah, but really you don't want to. Can I be truthful? I done done a lot of time, and I wouldn't want to go back to prison, not today. Unless I knew that it was God. 
Because the Bible says when Joseph was in prison, the Lord was with Joseph. When the Lord is with you, then you can speak and stand on Romans 8, 28. All things are working together for the good. We don't preach for hype. We preach for principles that go on off of Christ church. Would you go? Would you go? Lisa, if you had to leave the comfort of that beautiful home and get up out that Mercedes and say you got to and put on some oranges and you might not get to wear your, you know, your Nike, you got to put on some flip-flops for 10 years. Amen. This is what the man of God, I want to make it revelatory. I want to make it as simplistic as I can because I need you to understand. When the title said bound by his spirit, my God, when you have your mind made up, my God, there's just certain things you won't talk yourself out of. I promise you, if you begin to make your mind up about some of the things that you're dealing with and some of the things that you have to deal with in the future, I promise you, you will see different results than the results that you're getting. The reason why you're not seeing nor feeling, my God, the results that you're looking for because you have the wrong mindset. The Bible says Paul was bound by the Spirit. Paul had already purposed in his mind, purposed in his mind. So you got to have your mind made up before you get in a trial that you're going on to see what the end of a city life going to be. Oh, my God, no matter what come your way, my God, you got to already purpose in your mind, my God, that you you ain't going back. Many of us return back to our vomit because we ain't purpose in our mind. Many of us go back to the very stuff that led us to Christ. Ain't that something? We'll come down here and repent and ask God to forgive us for that mess. But soon as the squeeze, as soon as we get some joy and some victory, we return right back to the very thing that led us to the church. That's a form of ignorance to me. Are y'all with me so far? So Paul was bound by the Spirit, my God, man, and he purposed his mind. As I told y'all, he had a resolve, my God. Paul resolved, 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 being decided firmly on a course of action. Have you decided that you're going on with God? Have you decided that people walk out, you're walking on? Have you decided if they close down the company today, you still going to come to church on, Monday, on Wednesday and lift your hand and say he's still Lord and he's still God and he's God all by himself? Have you resolved in your mind? That don't matter what comes your way that you're going on. See, you have to begin to, my God, prepare yourself for war. As I told y'all, my God, I'm sorry that I don't get to God don't allow me to preach a whole lot of excitement. My God, because I'm into building. Building your life. Building your life for longevity. Building your life, my God, for the marathon. I have seen in my short 24 years of walking with God, many people running hard for God on the sprint, but they weren't built for the marathon. I'm trying to build you for the marathon, baby. I'm trying to build you for longevity, my God. And Paul was built for longevity. That's why the I would say he was bound by his spirit, my God. So no matter what came, what no matter what came his way, no matter what he heard, my God, it did not deter him. Who, my God, from the assignment, his number one goal, my God, was to please God. Paul didn't let, as we learned in discipleship one, he didn't have any strongholds. Discipleship one in his mind. He didn't have nothing, my God, in his mind going on in his psyche. Discipleship one to talk him out of fulfilling what God asked him to do. Fear. So when they spoke prison and trials, Paul didn't hear fear. When they mentioned suffering, my God, Paul heard Mr. Larry assignment. When they said, my God, you got to get up out your clothes and put on some orange jumpsuit, my God. You know what Paul heard? I'm writing two-thirds of the New Testament while I'm in there. See, he heard outlook determines outcome. He heard different. What are you and how are what are you and how are you hearing when you hear stuff that the enemy is trying to use to discourage you? See, you got to hear different. Paul didn't hear what they were saying. He heard his assignment. So point number one, my God, Paul's resolve, and I'll talk to you about that. I ain't going to mess with that, but jump down, my God, as I move on to be up on a point number one. For those that was here last week, my God, I'm jumping around for the second time, but if you want to catch up, you can go look at the YouTube, but jump down to point number one and right up under point number one, B. Let's look at the call to the present. A was the, his conduct in the past. Let's look at his call to the present. According to verse 22, it says, what should Paul do? My God, they would certainly hear that you have come. Mm -hmm. Paul had no choice in his assignment, church. Let me help you. They were all made by God. Can I help you? Uh, you don't get to choose. It was already chosen for you. The path that you own, yeah, you made some mistakes. Yeah, I made some mistakes. Yeah, you don't understand, but some of our paths, matter of fact, all of our paths has already been ordained. There's some things, my God, I'm sorry that you have to go through. 
There's certain things that I, as a pastor, my wife as the first lady cannot protect you from. It's part of your assignment. So, my God, when you understand there's certain levels of suffering, there's certain level of persecution, the Bible says, Paul said in the book of Acts, my God, all those that desire common to live godly shall suffer persecution. The Bible says a man must enter into the kingdom of heaven through many trials and tribulations. I can't, I, I got to tell you that there's no way around it. You can't sidestep what's been predetermined. You can't get around, my God, what God says you must experience. I got to listen to me so far. And so Paul, my God, had an assignment. He had no choice in that assignment. God told Ananias, go lay hands on him. He's a chosen instrument. And then he told him, I said, I must show him. I must show him. God said, and I, I must show him all that he must suffer. Paul suffered, my God, to do the work of the ministry. I have to help y'all understand, my God, those that feel like they're called to a level of ministry. There is always a, a level of suffering connected to effective ministry. Let me slow down and teach you. To effective ministry, there's a level of suffering. Trial. Pain, that's a, that's a sign to effective ministry. My God, his assignments, they were all made by God. Just keep doing, I want to tell y'all though, just keep doing the last thing God told you until he tells you to do something else. Put yourself in Daniel's shoes. He was faithful to God his entire life. Enoch served God faithfully for 300 years. Micah 6 eight says, no, old people. Oh, my God, the Lord has told you what is good. And this is what he requires of you. Can I help you understand something? Everybody, please look at me. I love you, but God requires more than you coming to church. God requires more of your attendance than just you coming to church. He requires, the Bible says in Micah 6 eight that you do right. So if you're coming to church and you're not doing right, that's a problem. If you come to church, you're not striving to live a sanctified, holy life. That's a problem. If you come to church and you know when you leave church, you're going to go home and do whatever you want to do. I question, are you really saved? Oh, my God, if you're full of the Holy Ghost and you got the Spirit of God living in you, there should be a level of conviction. Oh, my God, there should be something about you, my God. There, there should be some level of resolve to you. Say, you know what? I can't do that, my God. I just left church. I know I can't do that. I better not smoke it. I better not drink. I know I better not go over her house. Yes, I, I better not look at that, my God. Is there anything in you that will restrain you from deliberately doing something wrong? God requires that you do good. Why? Because somebody's looking at you, Christians. Somebody depending on you developing as a man or woman of God, Christians. And so, my God, if you leave church, my God, and they know you're going to go on off of Christ church, my God, and then you go home and you get involved in stuff that don't bring honor to God, you just ruined your testimony with the people that you're doing it with. And so when you come back around and you really get on fire for God and you try to witness to them, they ain't going to take you serious. See, that type of stuff ain't being taught. That's why we just do anything with people and think that it's okay. I go to church. I'm a Christian. No, you want to be effective as a Christian. You don't just want to go to church. That's why I say don't just do church, do Christ. When you have a head-on collision with Christ, you do like Paul. And you go from Saul to Paul and transformation will take place in your life. My God, you won't just do anything. You just won't say anything. You'll have some restraint in you, my God. And when persecution comes, you won't quit on God. When somebody don't speak to you at church, you won't quit coming to church. When the pastor don't acknowledge you, you won't quit coming to church. When you got resolved in you, because you're not here for me, you're here for Christ. Somebody give God a hand. I require that you do the right thing in, to, in love, mercy, and be humble about the things that you do. As I told y'all and been teaching y'all, don't let nobody call. Ah, y'all know what I'm about to say. Don't let nobody, my God, tell you because you're confident in God that you're being arrogant and prideful. People, my God, that lack uh, 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 self-confidence, people that struggle with self-esteem issue, when they get around somebody, man or woman that's confident, they want to criticize and call this confidence arrogant because I call her confident. She thinks she all that. He thinks he all that. No, I'm just walking in confidence. I'm just walking in who I am. Long as your confidence is in God, long as you're giving God the glory for what's going on in your life, that's not pride. You're giving God the glory. 
Where in the Bible, my God, did God tell us to walk with our head down and walk defeated and look defeated? Uh, Lawanya? Oh, when did God tell me I don't have to look good, smell good, and dress good? The devil is alive. You better ask somebody. Yeah. My God. When did God tell you that you're supposed to live a, 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 a defeated life? When did God tell you in the scripture that, 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 that we serve a, a mediocrity God? My God, we serve a big God. He owns everything on a thousand years, my God. Ain't no lack in the kingdom, my God. You ain't supposed to be defeated. Ain't hey, my God. You ain't supposed to be my God. You ain't supposed to be walking around, my God, completely defeated in your mind. Quit letting people hold you hostage because they defeated in their mind. Be careful that the people that you communicate with is the very people that the enemy is using to keep you from taking flight. Mm -hmm. So God requires some things, my God, that we, that we do right, we show mercy, and walk in humility. I'm done with that. Let's go to point two. You can catch up on point number one on YouTube. Let's look at Paul's reason. Paul had a reason why he was bound in the spirit. Let me give you this. Paul's deep sense of duty towards the master who had redeemed him and called him to service drove him onward despite the threats of danger and hardship. Paul's deep sense of duty is something about somebody who had a head on collision and joints with God. They see God different. They really have had an encounter with God. They're in love with God. They want to please God. Paul had their collision, my God, and he had a deep duty, a deep sense of loyalty. My God, there's something about people that's been snatched up out of them streets. They have a different level of loyalty. Yeah, Paul was a street person. Yeah, he was educated, Lanny, but he had a whole lot of street in him. Why, why was he such a killer so quickly? Why did he turn to try to destroy Christian, the Christian way? Even though the, the, uh, Vontaze, he was a theologian, look how he operated. He operated just like a Hitler. He operated just like a street person. Can you imagine somebody walking in there, Tasha, my God, dragging you out by your beautiful hair and with the purpose of throwing you in prison after they beat you to death? This was the man that I'm talking about. I'm trying to lay this, my God, because I want you to understand. He would walk into a place like this and drag out that baby, drag out your baby, and do whatever he can to torture your wife. This is who we're talking about. The man that would come in, my God, and have you. My God, he had Stephen stoned to death. He, he, he gave permission for people to be killed. I want y'all to understand what we're talking about. This is the type of people that God specializes in using. <laughs> Oh, my God, somebody with a testimony. Uh, somebody, my God, that got a little dirt on them. Uh, somebody got a little uh, dirt on them. Somebody that's been shoveling and walling around in sheep dung. My God, God specializes in using people, my God, that the world wrote off. Paul was bound. And so Paul, my God, was so powerful, my God, at the time. And so when he had that head on collision with God in the ninth chapter, he said, Lord, Lord. Anytime somebody would address you in the Old Testament, my God, as Lord, that's allegiance. He knew that he had met someone way more powerful than him. And his allegiance shifted right then. Who, my God, his allegiance shifted, my God. Who, my God, from his knowledge, my God, from his loyalty to the Jewish sect, my God, to going hard for Christ. Paul is the pity me of going hard for Christ. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. He immediately shifted, my God, from torturing Christian. Can you imagine? He did everything he could to destroy Christianity. And then after God saved him, he did everything he can to advance Christianity. Somebody give God a hand, baby. Ah, Paul was bound over in his spirit. Oh, my God. Oh. oh, they got me fired up, but I need to hold my post. Right down, my God. Look at this reason up on the point number two. Paul had a pure motive. What's your motive this morning? What's your motive for why you're doing what you're doing? Ask yourself, I got to do this. My God, why are you here? That's dumb. Pastor, duh. As my daughter would say, duh. No, it's not dumb. Everybody ain't motive ain't right. Everybody not here because they love Jesus. Some people came to church all around the country to do what? Check more. Scratch it off. Say, I went to church to clear my conscience. And that's why you're coming in every week. My God, ain't nothing transforming because you're not, your motive's not right. As I told y'all last week when I came off the altar and kissed my wife, everybody said, that's good. Pastor, love his wife. My God, but God is saying, okay, I seen you do that, but what's your motive? God judges motives. So you got to make sure your motive is right when you do stuff. Are you with me so far? Paul's motive was this. Paul simply wanted to finish his course. He knew that God had already planned his steps. 
We all have a course to run that has been mapped out by God himself. Francetta, let me look at you, woman of God. There was a purpose why you went through what you went through. We're sharing that. There was a purpose, Sister Do Johnson, why you went through everything you experienced, Sister Amber. Oh, my God, all that is part of the testimony. Everything you've been through, Sammy, I know it hurt. It's part of the purpose. It's something about pain. Pain has a way of forging you. Pain has a way of pushing you. Pain has a way of moving you forward. Oh, my God, pain will get you up out of a stuck situation. My God, you should let your pain push you and not keep you stuck. You should let your pain drive you and not keep you stuck, my God. Pain has a way of benefiting a true soldier that's bound over by the spirit, my God. It was good for me that I was afflicted. Pain has a way, oh, my God, of making you fall in love with Jesus. Pain will make you study. Pain will make you pray. Pain will make you fast. See, all that's good stuff that make you grow and develop in God. Oh, my God, pain, my God, will make you develop in God. You need a level of pain. Paul, them, my God, was in the city. My God, they preached the gospel. My God, they was thrown in prison, and they beat them and threw them in prison. Instead of Paul, them complaining, the Bible said in the midnight hours, they cried out to the Lord and sung worship song, and God shook the prison. Worship will shake the prison. What got you bound up this afternoon? What do you need to shift, my God, in your life? All you got to do is worship in the midst of your pain. Some of you, my God, couldn't even worship because you focus on the pain instead of focusing on the pain solver. Pain, pain, pain. Paul didn't let the pain deter him. Paul understood, my God, this course has already been set. I can't get around it. I can't James Brown. I can't try to shake it. I got to go through this, my God. But he already purposed in his mind are redundant. He already had his mind made up, Brendan. That's why I tell you, man, the God, people that, ah, like me and you, that God has snatched up out of them pitch, up out of their gain life, my God. And, uh, we, we got to go hard for God. Look what he done done for us. And as I talk about him, I'm talking about all of you. Think about the things he has kept you with, Felicia. Think about the things, the one you've been through, woman of God, raising them babies. And God kept you, his grace and mercy kept I think about my wife and all she had to go through, my God, used to be in my life. Because she loved me, my God. And she was willing to suffer while I was suffering. She was willing to stand while I was going through all my hell in my life. Who am I talking to in the church? Is any women standing, standing down for their kids? Any women standing down for their husband while God is working it out in their life? Do I got anybody in here that's going hard for their men? So your motive got to be right. I remember they said, won't you come home? Juju ain't going to never be nothing. My own family said, go home. You ain't going to, even my family thought I wasn't going to be nothing. Go on home. That boy ain't going to be nothing. He ain't doing nothing but spinning the pictures or dying in the streets. Uh, I can't go. She said, I love him. When I wasn't fit to live and wasn't ready to die, she said, I love him. Weighing 123 pounds, but I love him. <laughs> oh, he lost all of his weight, but he still was a dying piece. He was just a little light. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Hey, my God. Love, love, love. You, love. you know why you're here today? Because God love you. You know why you didn't die in your mess? Because God love you. You know why they wrecked me and killed you? Because God love you. I need my day. Love is what kept God loving you, my God. Love made God leave heaven and come down to earth, my God. Love made God go through that beating. Love kept God on the cross. Love made God get up because he loved you. Somebody give God a hand because he loved you. Mm. So Paul had a pure motive. Paul also had a powerful ministry. Can I help you understand something when you discover you? You discover the ministry that's in you. Let me teach you some substance now. Every last one of you, I don't care what type of mess you may be in. Remember, this man was a killer. This man thought he was doing God a favor, my God, by persecuting the church. My God, but God redirected his passion. Paul, my God, was a passionate, my God, warrior for God. All God did is save him and redirect his passion. Don't you know that there's ministries in you? There's ministries in you. There's businesses inside of you. Potential is laying dormant down inside of you. You need somebody to come by and yeah, yeah, yeah. breathe on you, my God, to awaken that potential that lives on the inside of you. That's why it's called the power of connection. Somebody got a key to unlock, my God, the potential that's laying dormant in you. 
That's why you need fellowship. That's why you can't be spotty with your fellowship because you're missing out. You're holding up your destiny. You're holding up your progress because you're up and down. God can't put his hands on you. You got to be consistent, my God. God says in the word that he shows himself faithful to those that are faithful. Oh, my God, there's things inside you, my God. Your deliverance was tied to me, my God. If you'd have been spotty, you'd still be a stone-cold alcoholic, boy, my God. But because you stay connected, look at you today. Come on, give God some glory for your deliverance. Yes, Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, somebody depends on you. There's something inside of you that people need. What are you holding up? What are you keeping to you that the world, my God, needs? God gave you a dream. God gave you a vision, but it ain't for you. It's for the people that's connected to you. There's people waiting on you to get in position. I'm way out there with y'all now. I'm trying to get y'all past this coming to church, my God. Oh, my God, no matter what comes your way, you got your mind made up that you're going on to see what the end of a say life going to be like. There's something on the inside of you. Think about that, my God. Look at the type of person your pastor was. Look at that. Look at what God has done today. There's something inside of you. So if there's something inside of me, I wonder what's inside of you that you have not discovered. Let me give you a principle. Leadership is self-discovery. When you discover the leader in you, you discover you. Leadership is self-discovery. When you discover you, you discover the leader in you. Everybody is gifted with leadership. Because the Bible said we are created in his image and his likeness. That means we have his nature. That means we can function like God. Oh, my gosh. So, therefore, that stuff that's on top of you, that stress, my God, all that anger, bitterness, and sin that's dominating you, you out of order. Because God gave you dominion over all that stuff according to Genesis 1.26. Dominion means rulership. Should nothing be ruling you but the Holy Spirit. Paul was bound by the Spirit. Oh, my God, the world didn't have no hold on Pastor Paul no more. He had died to the world to live as Christ and to die as gain. Oh, I know they ain't ready. Paul said to live as Christ, baby, and to die as gain. The world had no hold on it no more. Well, God saved him, my God, he saved him for real, Shay. That's why he went through so much persecution. When you're going hard for Christ, welcome to a world of pain and suffering. I said when you're going hard for Christ. When you're doing church, you ain't the Satan ain't worried about you. But when you're going hard for Christ, welcome. Potential. Dreams. Who's waiting? Ain't you tired? Ain't you tired of just doing life? God did not create you and I to get up, go to work, have some kids, spend some time with some grandkids, take a vacation maybe once every five years, drive a piece of a car. Every nine years, my God, you should be able to go and order something that costs more than $50. You ain't always got to go, and I'm not uh, it's, We serve a limitless God. We serve a great big God. God wants you and I to walk in super abundance. You can have it if you can see it. You got to see it, not just naturally by faith. What is it that you know you called to do? You had to see, Carmen, I was praying for you, and I was praying for just the beginning, I was praying for safe haven this morning, at five in the morning. My God, you saw them women. You saw it. Now look at you today. Y'all stand up. Come on, y'all stand up. Y'all stand up. These are the women. Carmen and went on, get her time, came out, and now she got a transitional home, and now she raising up other women. Who am I talking to in the church? God always validates his word. Oh, this woman had to go through what she had to go through, and now she helping other women come up out of their prison mess. I am a out. Hey, my God. But she had to see it. She had, to, uh, she had to be, I'm sorry, she, I, and many of you had to be the scapegoat. Why not you? I need you. I'll be quiet to you. You got to go do that dying flat. Because you had a divine connection while you was dying. I can't get nobody to say nothing. See what I'm trying to say? So why not you? Why not you? Paul could have said, God, God. But God said, no, 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 no. I chose you for this. This is your assignment. You can't get around this. I'm trying to liberate some of y'all. I'm trying to help you understand. You're trying to kick against the very thing God's trying to use to promote you and bless you, baby. Oh, something about this side over here. I like this side over here. My God, somebody on this side give God some glory. Yeah. Them church folks over there. Somebody over here give God some. I feel some energy. I feel some energy over here. I feel my help coming on over here. 
Oh, I got to stay from over there. They draining me. Hey, they draining me. Paul spoke to you. Paul, Paul spoke to you. Paul, 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 God had used Paul in a powerful way. Paul simply, as I stated, wanted to finish his assignment. Paul simply wanted to run his race well to receive the victor's crown. Paul said, I fought a good fight. I ran my course. I finished. There's a crown. Do you have a mindset to finish? When you're bound over by the spirit, you have a mindset. See, being bound over by the spirit also is a mindset. I was telling the class, we got a lady, Sister Nichelle, my childhood friend. She lives in Oklahoma City. She drives from Oklahoma City every Sunday, y'all, to come to class. And then she leaves class and go to Pastor Ron Church because she's a member of Pastor Ron Church. But she drives every Sunday, Taylor Johnson, from Oklahoma City. That means she get up extra early to drive her just to be on class on time. On time. And she's on time. Look at the mindset of that. We stay within a 15-mile radius and we can't get... Her motive is right. She's just hungry for God. Can I help you understand I'm moving? It's going to take more in this hour. I know 2020, I've been seeing some stuff on social media. 2020 is coming up the Lord, the last coming. Everybody talking about 2020 vision, 2020 focus. Man, come on. I understand the context of that. Seek God for the vision for your life. Seek God for the assignment and purpose of your life. Don't get caught up in the cliche because you could be pushing something like God. God said you way off, you way off course. You're focusing on 2020 vision, and I'm trying to get your mind free so you can possess the land. You're trying to cast vision. God said I'm trying to get you healthy because where I'm taking you, my God, you ain't ready for it. You too busy trying to run with some some cliche, my God. God said I'm trying to build you to outlast the storms in life. I'm trying to prepare you for what's coming, my God. I'm trying to get you ready, my God, because God wants to do some things in your life, my God. Don't get caught up in all this stuff that's going on in the world. Stay grounded. Say, God, reveal my assignment to me. That's what you need to be praying. God, show me my Pacific assignment. Yes, I'm joined with the family of going off of Christ Church. In that, my God, but you have your assignment. Janice is a member of Going Over Christ Church. She has an assignment to advance just the beginning, but she also has fulfillment when it comes to the church. Learn how to be balanced. Don't become selfish because you can begin to ask God for your assignment. My God, you make your life all about your assignment. Now you're out of order because then you're going to miss the people that God has brought in your life to bless your assignment. Write this down. He had a powerful message. Paul had one message. Paul wanted to continue to preach the life, change, and message, the gospel of grace. He knew he was preaching, my God, a perfect message according to Romans 1.16. Paul said this right here. Are you to this point in your life? Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the good news about Christ. It is the power of God. At work, saving everyone who believes. See, as I begin to study that and look at that, it says the power of the, 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 of the word, the grace, has the power to save, y'all, everyone that believe. Confess with your mouth, believe in your mind, heart, and show shall you be saved. Do you believe, though? When you have true belief, you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Just because you don't speak in tongues does not mean that you don't have the Spirit of God inside of you. After proper belief, here comes the Spirit, the empowering, the infilling of the Holy Spirit. There's a level of Spirit for the gift. The gift, spirit, speaking in tongues is a gift. And the Bible says God gives as he sees fit. Some of y'all, my God, think you're not saved because you don't speak in tongues. That's not Bible. Being saved has to do with your belief system, not how many tongues you speak in. Somebody give God a hand for that. Somebody needed that. I needed to put that out there because people have asked me about that. He said, for those who believe, my God, Paul says, my God, it's the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes, the Jew first and then the Gentiles. Anybody that was not a Jew by birth 
was considered a Gentile. So every black man, Indian, Latino, Mexican, you was considered a Gentile. Let me make y'all understand that. If you weren't born a Jew, you were considered a Gentile. So why is there so much prejudice in the world? Why we can't love our neighbor? See, if we obey the commandment, I'm in the wife was talking about this a while back, we just obey the commandments. The Bible says love thy neighbor. If I love you like the scripture admonishes me to, how am I going to hate you? How am I going to be jealous of you? Why am I going to try to marry your wife? Why would I want to sleep with your wife when I got my own? If I love you. See, the, see, see, we moved the church as a whole. Thank you. I'm after a man of God. The church as a whole have moved away from the commandments. Everything that we needed, my God, was in those Ten Commandments. If, if the church every Sunday just preached one of the Ten Commandments, it would clean up the whole body of Christ. The Bible says, thou shalt have no other God. Before. So think about all the little G's we got that's interfering with our commitment to God. That's why we can't be bound over. That's why we can't stay consistent. That's why we don't read. That's why we don't pray. Because we got too many gods, little G's interfering. Um, time could be a little God. We, we don't manage our time. Our time get away from us. Then we say, oh, I'll read it tomorrow. And then time get away from you again. Oh, I'll read it tomorrow. Too many of us too busy trying to get the, the, the American dream. Yes, we're supposed to live good, shine good, dress good, look good, smell good. I'm with all that. But anytime all that is your motive, I'm still with the scripture. As my wife just quoted, my God, you're in trouble. Anytime you worship in the purse more than you worship in the God of the purse, you're in trouble. Some of you live to get a purse. Is that what you have dumbed God down to? All God is to you is a pair of shoes and a trip to the casino every now and then because you're gambling off all of his money, trying to get rich because you want the American dream. You're more committed to the casino than you are to read the word of God. You spend more time in the casino than you do reading and praying. Then you wonder why your life is cursed. Just because you got a car and a job don't mean you're blessed. That's Bible. That's still with the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt have no other God before me. We, 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 not you, we, got to make sure we ain't got these little G's interfering with our commitment to God. And then after that, he said, love thy neighbor. Love thy neighbor as yourself. I love some juju. And so if I love me, I got to be able to love you. That's mm, the greatest is faith, hope, and love. The greatest and easiest, love. Love what binds all this stuff together, uh, Brandon. Now that we're in our right mind, why would we kill somebody? Here go to homie. My God used to be a crip. Why would we kill him? Because he had on blue. And we were red. Look at the mindset that God had to deliver us from, man of God. And they wonder why I go so hard the way I go so hard. Because I understand that I could have died in my mess behind the collar and I'd have bust hell wide open if I'd have died out there when they shot me up. Ah, somebody need to give God a hand for your life. I'm just trying to help you understand. I'm just trying to help you understand, my God, we got so many different things interfering with our commitment and loyalty to God. I'm still with the sermon. Paul was bound over by the spirit. Paul, Javantes, was in love with Jesus. He had no other ulterior motive. He didn't want nothing else but to love God and please God. That was his number one ambition. His number one goal was to finish his assignment. That should be our life. That should be our motive. That should be our goal. Somebody give God a hand. I'm trying to. Uh, that Bishop Hurl Wayne Jones said, I'm trying to put a quart in a pint. Oh, my God. Spirit of God got me out there pastoring the whole body of Christ. There's many different things going on in this atmosphere. It's not about the notes. Can you touch God and catch God in the spirit? We do not need to resort to different methods, messages, and techniques. You don't have to do all that. You don't have to do all that. Listen to this right here. Let me hear it. I'm going to close this show. Mm. While they was in Lustria, Paul and Barnabas, chapter 14 of Acts, verse number 8. While they was in Lustria, Paul and Barnabas came upon a man with crippled feet. He had been that way from birth. So he had never walked. He was sitting and listening to Paul preach. Looking straight at him, Paul realized he had faith to be healed. Do you got faith? Paul looked at that man. He had faith to be healed. My God. So Paul called to him in a loud voice, stand up. And the man jumped to his feet and started walking. When the Spirit of God called you this afternoon, will you respond? Or will you stay crippled? 
You might not be crippled in your feet, but you're crippled in your mind. You're crippled, my God, with self-defeat, cutting yourself and all of those type of stuff. Yeah, my God, we're doing more harm to ourselves because we're defeated in our mind. God is calling you forth. This is deliverance ministry. That's why the sermon is like, yeah, God is calling you forth. When you respond like the man that was crippled on his feet, you may be able to get up and walk. But as I said, are you crippled in your emotions right now? We laying beside our husband and wife and we can't stand them. Crippled. Crippled. We looking at our kids, my God, and we wish we could take a, a, a frying pan like my grandma used to say and bust their head wide open. We angry at our children. Crippled. Won't even speak to our siblings. Crippled. Don't want to go to all the holiday festivities because we angry. Crippled. Christians. That's right, Christians. And we talking about we're going to stand before God and her job well done. Crippled. You better get past that one say it always say stuff and get saved for real. Mm. Are y'all with me so far? Paul was bound in the spirit. I'm finna close. Acts the 14th chapter, verse number 19. It says this, Taylor Johnson, Dean Heath. Then some Jews arrived from Antioch and Iconium and won the crowds to their side. They stoned Paul and dragged him out of town, thinking he was dead, Naila. But as the believers gathered around him, he got up. They stoned the man of God because he was preaching the gospel. They thought he was dead. The believers came and gathered around him. Power of agreement. The Bible says Paul got up. <laughs> he just almost lost his life. But because he's bound in the spirit, because he's in love with Christ, he has purpose in his mind that I'm going on to see what the end of a saved life going to be like. He said, ain't no shadow of turning. No matter what they do to me, no matter how they try to kill me, my God, they stone me. So I can imagine he's bleeding. He's bleeding. He's wounded, my God. The Bible says the, the believers got around him. The strength in numbers, the strength in numbers, the strength in numbers. The believers got around him. And the Bible says Paul stood up, baby. And Paul, my God, went right back into the same city, my God, that he almost lost his life in. And said, I'm right back at you, baby. I ain't going nowhere, baby. I got one assignment and that is to preach the gospel and I ain't leaving till I do what I'm called to do if I lose my life to be absent from the body is to be present for the Lord oh my God Paul we solved in his mind that I'm going to preach the gospel that is my assignment though you stole me I'm going back though you lie on me I'm showing back up though you turn your back on me I'm still going on you got to make up your mind my God no matter what comes your way so I'm going to keep being faithful I'm going to keep showing up I don't care who don't show up I'm going on to see what the end of a saved life gonna be like bound by a spirit oh if the church was like that today if I had 10 people that was like that today God would do miracles signs and wonders over her on second and third stoned him he got right back up and went back into the city baby and preached the gospel let me bring a little context to that as I get ready so I get my face cut all up and more than star apartments. I don't know what they call it. Bradford. They cut me all up, cut from inches from you from cutting my juggler vein. I go to the hospital, MLS come take me to the hospital. They stitch me all up, my dumb butt. Get right, catch a cab right back to the same place that I came from inches from losing my life. Not because I was bound by the spirit, I was dominated by the flesh. Cut my face up. You can see inside my jaw. Instead of me going home to that one that I had been away from for probably about a week at the time, I catch a cab and go right back out there to the very place that I like to lost my life. You see, I did that for the wrong reason. Paul did that for the right reason. Motive. God always validates his word. Wrong reason. What Paul was talking about is right reason. If you were stoned, would you get back up and go back into the city and still preach? Because your assignment means more than your life. 
Your assignment will inconvenience you. Your assignment will take you places that you never dreamed of, good and bad. Your assignment will get you in a whole lot of trouble. Your assignment will get you stoned. Your assignment, y'all, will get you thrown in prison. Your assignment will cause problems in your personal life. The calling that's on your life will interrupt your life, church. T.D. Jakes was preaching this morning. We listened to it. He said 1,500 people a month, pastors, leave the church, resign. 4,000 a year. Leave the pulpit. Said, I can't do it. And Pastor Chan said, Pastor, why do you think that happened? Me walking in the office of a pastor now, understanding now, depression, frustration with the people, constantly have to believe God for finances to pay bills, people steady ripping our hearts out that we give our life to, that stuff takes a toll. And they said, I'd rather go get a nine to five than deal with all these hateful professing Christians. That's why you better thank God for a pastor that loves you. Mm, mm, mm. Let me bring you to the rest. Let me bring you to the rest. Let me bring you to the rest. Point three, he entered into a rest. Let me bring you this in closure. I know the Spirit of God covered a lot of ground today. I can see why the Spirit of God woke me up early and had me energized. I thank God my wife said, baby, set the clock. Set the clock back up, an hour, whatever she told me to do. And I woke up like I normally do, and I'm ready to get it on. I came in purpose in my mind to do warfare today. I came in, I felt good, feel good. My body feel good, my leg ain't hurt me. I got peace in my soul, I'm good at the krill. I feel like giving God some glory. I can't get nobody to think of like that. I just feel good, Tasha. Hey! And I look good. Mm. This is how you enter to a rest. I'm gonna close you and pick you up and I need y'all to receive. Have this helped anybody? Come on, have it helped anybody today? It's only two things I want to give you. And I'm moving quickly. There's two things I want to give you. See, there's a rest in Hebrews that Paul, I mean, that God talks about, my God, in the book of Hebrews, that God wants all of his people to enter into. But that rest means that you got to surrender. That rest, that rest that comes from God means you got to let it go. There's a rest where you have to be vulnerable. Some of you, my God, let me help you, ladies. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Some of you, ladies, ladies, even the men, this is a time. Well, you're going to have to get naked. You're going to have to get naked so God can penetrate those areas that you got to wall up. You will never be able to enter into the rest of God with walls up. You'll always be, when you got walls, you'll always be on the outer court. When you go through the temple, it's the outer court, inner court, and holiness of holiness. It's time for the church around the nation, this prophetic, to enter into that rest. But that rest consists of you being vulnerable. That you letting yourself go before God. He knows anyway. Why do you think that God don't know what's going on with you emotionally? Some of us, my God, because we have been rejected, we have been violated, we've been touched, we've been molested, I'm being careful because my baby, my God. And so we don't want nobody to touch that, that cavity. That cavity. It hurts. We won't even let God touch it. God is speaking to that place right now. You can't move. Listen to me, church. Whatever you don't confront won't change. You can't move to the you can't move to the next level until you deal with this stuff on this level. You got to be vulnerable. You got to be vulnerable. Men, you got to be vulnerable. You got to let God deal with those insecurities. A lot of that is called we insecure. You know, it's a lot of people. Me and Brandon talking about this about a week ago. There's so many people that scared in gang life. And so they walk around with that tough mentality, but they scared to death. It took me a minute to get past that. When you hit that yard right there, you're on a yard with a thousand people, and they mobbing, they going crazy up there, you got to put up the interior. Some of us is like this, women too. My God, right now, with God, we fearful to death. We won't let nobody get too close. If anybody reminds us of our mamas, we run. If it's a man, my God, that makes me uncomfortable because he walked in the statue, my God, we self-sabotage. We fearful. The church as a whole is fearful. We got to be vulnerable. Yeah. I had to get to the point, Vontez, where I had to let it go. Yeah. I couldn't worry about what my partners think when I was in the penitentiary. When I got saved, I had to let it go, man. Right. I couldn't put, my God, their perception of me before God's perception of me. Yeah. 
I had to accept who God said I was. I was tired, woman of God. I was tired of hurting myself. I was tired of disrespecting my wife. This baby was a baby and my son. I was tired. I had to get to the point where I had to be vulnerable. I'm speaking from experience, man. Can you imagine coming to Christ in a penitentiary and all my partners off and are still going hard? And I had to be willing, my God, to lay the flag down, baby. I'm, I'm, I'm out here. I'm trying to teach y'all. I got to be transparent like this to help y'all understand. I had to lay it down, homie. See what I'm trying to say? To get to God. Because I was sick. I needed help. And my pride would have kept me sick if I hadn't been vulnerable. I can't get nobody saying nothing right there. Hey, my God. I had to lay it down, champ. Yeah, you did. Some of y'all going to have to lay it down so you can enter this rest I'm trying to get you to. And then you won't be just be saying it's good on the side. It, is it? When I say it's good on this side, I mean that. It's good on this side. Even in the midst of storms, it's good on this side. Even in the midst of trials, Jordan, it's okay, daughter. It's still good on this side. Some of y'all don't understand that because you're exalting your problems more than the God solver of the problems. But you got to enter this rest. I'm sorry, y'all. I had to use a lot of natural I'm going to even say fleshly examples to bring y'all into what the Spirit of God is trying to convey. You had to go through it, Carmen. Look at down that road. Look at that. Look at that. The Bible says, let's a seed. Let's a seed fall into the ground and die. It abided alone. You had to go die first. Now look down that road, Carmen. Because you died, look at all this. Some of you gonna have to die. Some of you gonna have to die. You ain't dead or dead enough. I still gotta die. You gonna have to die to see the fruit of your labor. Let's a seed fall into the ground. Amen, woman of God. Ooh, shall I she kill on the Let's a seed. The Bible says all of us are seeds unless we fall into the ground and die. Die to our likes. Die to the pride. Die to the low self-esteem. Die to the false perception. Die and accept the truth. Until you are willing to be vulnerable, until you are willing to die, you are bad and alone. When you die and you start to die, God will start sending people. And then you'll look down the road and you'll see your legacy. That's one, two, three, four. That's five. And some of them not even there. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm trying to teach y'all. She's in the fifth generation. Right here. One, two, three, four, five. That's five generations. Pastor Peoples had to come and die. Pastor Peoples is still dying. Many of you said, my God, if it had not been for you and Pastor Michelle's yes, you would still be in your mess. Unless you are willing to die today, welcome to you abiding alone. But if you're willing to be vulnerable and die, welcome to the fifth generation. You don't know what them women going to become. You don't know who, which one of them is connected, my God, and their provision, my God, to buy you two or three more houses may come right through one of them. Janice, all the people that you have touched, even some of your generation are sitting right here. All the ones that has came, graduated, and shifted, you had to die so that they can become. Me and my wife had to die so that you can become. One of these days, you're going to get to the point where you appreciate the price. And I'm not saying you don't, but you're going to get to the point where you appreciate it. I had to die. For God to save your marriage. You're going to get to the point where you appreciate the price that has to be paid for your set man and woman of God. You're going to get to the point where you appreciate the price that some of your leaders have to pay to pray and cover you. That moves you back to the second greatest commandment. It's to love thy neighbor as thyself. This is an apostolic word to the body of Christ for those that's online and those that's in the presence. This is not a church message. This is apostolic word that's coming across the pulpit right now. It's not just dealing with, dealing with a general, general statement. It's dealing with apostolic movement. Unless you die, you're battling alone. Are you willing to be vulnerable? I'm going to give you this one thing. 
The reason why Paul was able to enter into God's rest, because he was bound over, he was able to rest even though he was facing opposition. He was able to rest even though he was thrown in prison. He was able to rest, my God, even though he was beaten. Oh, my God, do you understand what I'm saying? Because of this right here, Paul lived a surrendered life. Write that down. Everything the Spirit of God said, you're going to have to surrender. You're going to have to surrender. You're going to have to surrender. It's the reason why they bought you when you transitioned home from Oklahoma City to a man's encounter. Look at you today. Look how many souls are blessed behind your baby today. Think about where you would be if it weren't for Christ and going home for Christ Church right now. Y'all wouldn't be engaged to be married if it weren't for Christ and going home for Christ Church because he'd probably be doing the things he was doing. Mm. See, you got to learn how to be grateful. God is able. 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 Pastor Champ was crying so hard. Pastor, I mean, uh, Sharon in the back. When he was thinking about his marriage. He just broke. See, they don't get to see that like I do. Thinking about how. Thank you for loving me, man. tell y'all about this rest I'm talking to myself 1500 pastors every month resign from full time pastoring because of the pressure T.D. Jake said something brother Mike Hughes gave me a turned me on to a video he said as a pastor you got to get to the point where you have people around you that you pull into, but they pull back into you. You need some people around you, ladies and gentlemen. You don't have to be a pastor, just as a person, Shemaine, that you pull into, and they can pull back into you. Some people's self-esteem is so low, they keep people, I hate to use this, but I need, I have to, beneath them. They don't want to bring nobody to their level because, my God, then it's going to inconvenience you. You got to bring people up to your level. If they at a level when you meet them, my God, don't dumb yourself down. Come down, humble yourself, and help them come up to the level that you are. Because you need people, Brother Gifford, my God, to feed you so that you can feed them. Are you listening to me? Many pastors is feeding, but they ain't got nobody to feed them. Are you listening to me? This is not just for pastor. This is for you. Get people around you, Desi, that feed you. Everybody, if they draining you, where you going to go? Me and my wife was having dinner Friday, my God. I'll share this, and it's a list, my God, of Wayne Cadero. Pastor Dean blessed me with a book about burnout by Wayne Cadero. It says, list six things that fuel you and list six things that drain you. I had my list, and she had a list. We didn't do them together, and we began to discuss them. Six things that drain you and six things that fuel you. Six things that drain you and six things that fuel you. When God brings you a dime, my God, you say, look, I don't even know your six. I need to make sure we're compatible because we might not be compatible. Is that not true, man of God? Apostolic, I'm out there. Let me give you this last one. He lived a surrendered life. Paul was not moved by what he faced, church, in Jerusalem. Everything he had was already been placed on the altar. I was trying to get there last Sunday, but God wouldn't let me. If everything you're trying to hold on to, you got to be willing to place it on the altar so God can give it back to you. Give their pain over. Give them addictions and habits over. Give the cigarettes, little stuff like that. That is petty stuff. I'm not downplaying, it's petty. Why do I say that? Because God's blood is able to deliver you. God's blood is able to heal you. 
It's hard. It was hard for me. I smoked cigarettes for 10 years. But when I purposed in my mind that I was done, I've been done since 1997. You can do it. You can do it, but you got to be willing to surrender. And then you also have to be willing to live a sanctified life. Paul entered into the rest of God because he lived a surrendered life and he lived a sanctified life. Don't you know that our habits and hang-ups will cause a lot of pressure on you and I? That's why y'all delivered. Sanctify. When you got a lot of stuff in your life, it robs you of rest and peace. When you got a lot of sin and hang-ups and habits trailing behind you, as the Bible say, it robs you of rest. God wants you and I to enter into a rest. But there's a price, as I've been saying, that you have to pay. You got to be vulnerable. There's another level of rest for you, Kendra. You have functioned and operated in major ministry. But now it's time for God to heal you mentally and emotionally so that you can soar. We don't get to stay broken and function. Too many of us is broken, but yet trying to function. Get healed. Get healed. Let's bow our heads right quick. Let's take care of this because it may be somebody here. If you don't know him, you have never accepted him. And you want to give your life to Christ. I know we went up and we went down. We dealt with all three levels. Top, middle, and bottom. Bottom, middle, and top. My father said a lot of pastors can only go from the top to the middle. They can't go to the gutter. You have been gifted to be able to go from the bottom to the top, from the top to the bottom. And the Spirit of God went from the bottom to the top to the top to the bottom. That means everybody in here, God said something to. God was able to meet you right where you at. If you are here and you have never ever accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And you want to give your life to Christ because you want to believe. Not just confess, but believe. And you believe that he is, the Bible says, a rewarder of those that diligent seek him. And you ready to meet that God and be able to say it's good on his side. If that's you... Won't you be transparent and vulnerable and say, you know what? I want to know for sure that I'm saved. Raise your hand. If that's you, anybody. Thank you for those hands back there. Thank you. Anybody else? You, you, you've, been, you've been coming to church and you've been around church, but, 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 but you just ain't sure. Uh, you don't know if you feel with the Spirit of God because you know, things ain't changing in your life. Is that you? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Thank you for those hands. Thank you. If you raise your hand, please come down quickly. Don't let the Spirit of God beg you. If you want to give your life to Christ, just come. Make your way down. If you raise your hand in that first ploy, come. Falling in love with Jesus. I see some hands over here. If that's you, come. If you want to give your life to Christ. You want to know for it beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're saved. If that's you, come. Thank you, Lord, for these ladies. Thank you for these ladies. If you are away from God, if you are away from God and you know you are away from God, you ain't been bound over in your spirit in a long time. Your agenda has not in a long time been God's agenda. Your desire to please God has not been as it should be. If there's some things that you just need some help with, if you just need somebody to touch and agree with you, raise your hand, raise your hand, raise your hand, my God. My God, I'm going to ask that you all just come. Just come.